my introduction to Walter Mucho Scott came in the form of a meeting that my guys, that, that Rip and Lewis, they went to Virginia Beach to sit down and talk with Teddy Riley about doing a, re, uh, a remix or doing, doing some songs on, my, on, a, on an album. And of, uh, of course, at that time, Teddy was so busy with everything. Yeah, was, Mike, Bobby Brown, he just did Michael Jackson, SWV. He was in Black Street, yeah. So that was. He was on, he, this was even before Black Street. He was on fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody was going to his store. His his place for hits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. at that point, he had a whole bunch of producers. And now, mind you, in some of these talent show performances, I used to dress up in all black all the time. High top fade. I used to want to be like Diesel, Daryl. Oh, so you knew about basic black. I knew about basic black. Nothing but a party, special oh, kind yeah. of food. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? I used to buy up to their stuff all the time. And when I found out that Teddy couldn't do the remix on my my title track of the album, You're the One, he sent this guy named Walter Mucho Scott, who had a track record. You know, he was up and coming producer. You know, of course, he did the, the basic black stuff with his. You didn't know guy. he was you didn't know he was part of basic black. I had no idea. I just knew he was funny. I thought he was funny <laughs> in videos. He was always on the drum. <laughs> Doing yeah, all yeah, this yeah. stuff. I'm like, yeah. what is he doing, man? <laughs> yeah, What's yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. I was like, that dude looks like he's having fun. I want to talk with him. That's my <laughs> man. He on the drums playing that thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> having a good, and then on the keyboard. Mm, 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 yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yo, that's <laughs> yeah. my dude. And then Diesel's voice, he had a voice of an angel. Man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I was like, man. I'm going to sing his song. And Special Kind of Food was the joint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, what was the other one? She's Mine. Yeah, She's Mine. The, the yeah. Yeah. Which I thought, you know, I Want You by Blackstreet was pretty much a spinoff off of that, which it could have been because they were, I think they were like the backup band or, or on tour with them. All of them were rolling together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And no, I interviewed spec and, and 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 even mucho and and yeah. basic black were the with the backup band for today so yeah, for today, Bob. and yeah. so the, but they were part of the whole camp with gr and teddy and stuff and so they all yeah they all one family all of them were yeah and so for, the more i learned about that i'm like man that's probably where i'm supposed to be you know what i'm saying i've been studying all of them got my chops up you know still working on being better that's where i need to be so at this point you know, um, Teddy can do the remix. They brought Mucho, and they flew Mucho into Orlando. Him and his oh, brother, okay. Zach. His brother, Zach, me and him met up. We went bowling before they brought Mucho down. I guess he was there to fill me out. And I don't know how much you know about Zach, but he's a bass player, Mucho's brother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I spoke to Jay Hart, and he talked about the, the his uncle Zach. And, They're and, amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Columbus, Georgia, man. They, they're on fire. Joe came from there, the singer Joe. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm sitting there jamming, talking with him, and he was like, yo, I'm going to get my brother to come down there and work with you like that. And I was like, okay, it'll be fun. He comes in. He started to work on the remix to You're the One. But then he said, he pulled me to the side. He's like, hey, man, I'm working on this group thing. I was like, okay, what's the, what's the group? He said, I want to put together this group project, and we're going to call it 911. He was like, I want you, Joe Thomas, and me to be in the group. Joe Thomas, Joe, Joe Thomas. You kidding me? No, I'm in love, Joe. Now, yeah. mind you, I'm in love is on fire. He's out. We doing like all these radio dates. He's doing one. We meet in Fayetteville, North Carolina. His trailer's right next to mine. I go over to Joe's trailer and I say, yo, I said, Joe, I said, are you really about to do this project? I just want to know because it'll be great if you can do it, if you're doing it. And he said yes, but it was the kind of yes, like no. <laughs> in turn, it was a no. <laughs> I mean, because he was blowing up. I mean, he didn't need to be in part of a group. He did not need to be in part of a group. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, and nor did I, to be honest with you. And for me, I was like, here's a chance. You know, I'm not really seeing the kind of money coming from my solo career. And at that time, somebody was calling... I want to say it, Robin Hood or something, some DJ out of the UK was calling to have me come and do like a show. I did a radio interview and all this other stuff at the label, Rippet Records. 
mm-hmm. and was possibly going to go over there and do like a couple shows there. And they get the label gave me the option to either do the shows there or to go and start working on this group project 911, which I will still have my solo career and um, the, the 911 project at the same time. And they were cool with that. So I get to um, Atlanta, get with, get with Mucho, and he says, Joe can't do the group because Island won't let him if they can't have the album. So that's out of the question. But we have Dizo. And I'm like, who is Dizo? <laughs> I'm like, who's that? Yeah, because I didn't know Basic Black's lead singer's first name. I didn't know any of that. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of other stuff. I just don't do it. I just tie whatever name they call themselves. That's that group. Simple as that. Yeah. Jagged Edge, I can't tell you the name of them. You know, Boys to Men, I could tell you some of them. You yeah. know, Guy, yes. Yeah, but a lot of them I can't. So I'm like, okay, D- D- Diesel? Uh, yeah, Daryl, man, lead singer from Basic Black. Uh, no way <laughs> I lose my mind. I say, like, he's my hero. He's in this house. He's like, yeah, there he is right there. Daryl! <laughs> I lost my mind. I'm like, this is my hero. You know, over, even over Aaron, and definitely over Aaron, because when I had promoted my, um, album you know the single foreplay at jack the rapper music convention i had a girl i was dating that was there and we had just saw tupac who who just came in with his crew and and west coast all this crazy stuff that's going on at jack yeah just like the movie this stuff was happening Hmm. and um uh i'm on the elevator aaron hall gets on the elevator with me and my my girlfriend and he's got a girl with him and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta say something to him. I said, Aaron, I said, I said, listen, I said, you changed my life as a singer, and I just wanna thank you for that. I said, I would not be the vocalist I am if had it not been for me studying your music and what you've done to the world of RB. Thank you. He said, Yo, man, get off my dick. In front of my girl and his girl. And I was like, wow. Wow, I was I was in shock. My goodness. my other hero, yeah, that I looked up to. Yeah, wow, yeah, that rude, yeah, just like that. So, I was like, okay, it is what it is. I look at my girlfriend. I couldn't even. I looked at. Her, <laughs> I was so embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. I, if I called her right now, she would remember that, and she'd probably start laughing again because she was in shock just as much as I am. But um. In, anyway, so in that case, I got to work with Daryl. And what, what year was this? Because I'm just wondering where he, where, where he was, was. Was this after Guy at Future album? Was this when he was doing his solo one? So, 94. 90, 94. So, 90, so, he would have just come out with The Truth. No. Okay. So, 93. This was... Um, 93, Jack the Rapper, was when I promoted um, my single. Yep, that's when that happened. Okay, ninety three. Yeah. So he, yeah. So this yeah. is Juice. So he would have come out with his um his own. So he might have been there to promote his solo album, The Truth. He was. He was there for that. Yeah. yeah was that? Yeah. 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 Okay. But even still, yeah. No, no, it's not. No, I'm not making excuses. This no, is no, no. That ego. It was pretty, pretty crazy, you know. And but I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. What it is. I mean. I believe what you put out in the world, it comes back to you. If you throw negative energy out, mm. it's gonna pop right back to you. Yeah, every single time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.